Hi, my name is Liz Ishikevich, and today I will be presenting work that focuses on identifying unexpected services on the internet. More than 300 security studies have used internet-wide scanning to study the vulnerability of the internet. Projects have ranged from understanding service deployment, such as PLS and DNS, to predicting online cyber threats. However, past studies generally only scan IANA assigned ports, and they thereby implicitly assume that the majority of services are hosted on their IANA assigned ports. For example, since IANA assigns SSH to port 22 and HTTPS to port 443, it is assumed that by scanning only port 22 and 443, that the majority of SSH and HTTPS services will be found. In this work, we first investigate where internet services are deployed in practice. For example, are the majority of Telnet services really on port 23? We study what is the security posture of services on unexpected ports. Are services on unexpected ports more or less likely to be secure? Lastly, we investigate how do we efficiently identify a services protocol. To begin answering the question of where services are deployed in practice, we take a step back and analyze a methodology used for identifying TCP services. For example, ZMAP is a tool that is often used to identify services. ZMAP works by sending a SYN packet and waits to receive a SYN app before closing the connection. This is often referred to as a layer four handshake. By using Zeman, researchers assume that receiving a SYN app is a likely sign that the expected service is really present behind the SYN app. As a result, if researchers choose to perform a follow-up layer seven handshake, the assumed service, in this case, HTTP on port 80, is the only service scanned. To test if the assumptions that task scanning methodology makes are correct, we scan 1% of the IPv4 address space across 37 IANA assigned ports and compare the number of IPs that send to SINA to the number of IPs that complete the expected L7 handshake. When scanning port 80, we see that roughly 14% of hosts do not complete the expected HTTP handshake. Moreover, as ports become less popular, this discrepancy becomes amplified. 96% of hosts that send back a SYNAC on port 502 do not complete the assigned Modbus handshake. So why are hosts not completing the expected L7 handshake? Is it due to a broken TCP stack on the server or some middle box behavior, or are there unexpected services living on IANA assigned ports? As we begin our investigation, we find that task methodologies for identifying real TCP services are insufficient. Tools such as ZMAP, which only rely on the layer four TCP handshake, fail to capture whether the service actually speaks TCP. In order for a service to be real, it must also be able to accept data and acknowledge any data received, according to the TCP RFC. We compare the fraction of hosts that SYN with the fraction that acknowledge data and find that up to 96% of hosts that SYNAC never acknowledge the data that was sent. This phenomenon is again amplified as ports become less popular. For example, while only 3% of hosts on port 80 do not acknowledge data, 86% of hosts fail to acknowledge data on port 502. It turns out that network defenses such as middle boxes are responsible for services appearing to be real due to a successful TCP handshake, even when there are no real services present on that IP and port. We detail in our paper the exact five middle box behaviors that contribute to this phenomenon. To understand what fraction of services that acknowledge data are unassigned and unexpected, we set up an experiment to scan all 65,000 ports with 30 unique protocols each across 0.1% of the IPv4 address space and filter for services that acknowledge data. We find that 27% of services on popular ports and 63% of services on unpopular ports are unassigned and unexpected. 
we discovered that HTTP and TLS dominate unexpected services, with 65% of all unexpected services speaking HTTP and 30% speaking TLS. Furthermore, we find that IANA sign protocols are incredibly diffuse across all ports. Only 3% of HTTP is found on port 80, only 5.5% of Telnet is found on port 23, and only 6.5% of TLS lives on port 443. As seen in the figure, when looking across all ports, we find that researchers must scan 25,000 ports to achieve 90% coverage of all HTTP on IPv4. We discovered that 50% of unexpected TLS actually belongs to IoT devices. For example, 35% of TLS on port 8000 are CCTV security devices in Korea Telecom. 5% of unexpected TLS on port 8443 are Android TVs across a variety of different networks in Korea. And TLS on port 80, 38% of it, are actually Huawei routers that are present across 1% of all ASs worldwide. Furthermore, we find that unexpected services are more vulnerable than, unassign than assigned services. For example, ports hosting unexpected TLS post two times more certificates with a known private key compared to prior work. 23% of ports hosting unexpected TLS are more likely to host shared public keys than assigned TLS. And ports hosting unexpected SSH are two and a half more times more likely to allow non-public key authentication. In other words, security studies really should scan unexpected services this begs the question, how do we scan to find unexpected services? It's not feasible to recommend researchers to attempt over 30 handshakes for every port scan, such as we did in our experiment. To address this concern, we identified two scanning patterns that help us inform how to build a more efficient protocol scanner. First, we discovered that eight of the 30 protocols we scanned identify themselves first to the client. This means that by merely opening a TCP connection and waiting to accept the data, we can easily fingerprint the service. Second, we find that 10 out of 30 protocols identify themselves using the wrong handshake. In other words, after establishing a TCP connection and sending, for example, an HTTP GET request, services such as MongoDB will respond in a fashion in which it is easy to tell which service is actually running. Building on these two primary insights, we build a completely new scanner called LASER, which is tailored to efficiently identifying services. LASER relies on ZMAP to start the connection between the client and server. Once a server responds with the synapse, however, LASER intercepts the connection and takes over establishing the connection by sneakily attaching data to the acknowledgement of the TCP handshake. Laser then waits to receive protocol identifying data from the server, at which point it closes the connection. Laser can also be used in tandem with an application layer scanner such as ZGrab, informing ZGrab of which protocol to actually scan for. Laser's key features are that it fingerprints all server responses and also ignore ho ignores hosts that do not acknowledge data. By doing so, LASER is able to easily find unexpected services while also reducing the scanning time, as LASER no longer tries to reattempt to make a connection with a service that is likely just a middle box. We benchmark LASER and find its performance gains to be prevalent when scanning less popular ports, which are likely to be dominated by middle boxes. For example, Laser is 55 times faster than using ZGrab when scanning the IANA assigned MongoDB port. Even when scanning HTTP on port 80, Laser is 4.3 times faster than ZGrab. Laser, however, is also able to fingerprint up to 18 unique protocols in one scan. For example, 
when scanning MongoDB on port 27017, Razor finds an additional 14 unique protocols besides MongoDB. So our takeaways for this project are, a cinematic is not a real service. Therefore, scanning studies must scan layer seven to identify and find real services. IAM and assigned protocols are diffused across all 65,000 ports. Scanning studies should scan for protocols across all ports. Unexpected services are more likely to be vulnerable. So security studies in particular should scan for protocols across all ports. And finally, we built Laser, which is an open source scanner that efficiently finds unexpected services and that will be available on GitHub. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Thank you.